Thank God. Well, let's see if we can get a bit further on this, because we spoke to the very Ooh. Reverend Colin Semper. Oh, He's Colin. the canon of Westminster and producer yes. of your Radio 1 religious chat shows yes. called Speakeasy. He told us this. The relationship which was quintessential to him uh, was that with his mother, the Duchess. That was all important, and I sometimes feel that if he had had a long and lasting other relationship than that, rather than this nomadic existence, it might have been more fulfilling for him in his life. So according to the canon, is it, is it really because you had this special relationship with your mother that you found it difficult to create other relationships with other women? Unfortunately, no. Unfortunately. It would make life easy so. if I could say yes, but the Duchess had no part in this nefarious Li knife of mine uh, after dark, which was the pop world. But it would be true to say that the Duchess, mm. your mother, mm. is the only woman that you've really had a special close relationship with. No. Well, that's what you said earlier on. You said you hadn't had anybody, anybody else. I tell lies when it suits me. <laughs> I've had plenty of close relationships, but like I said, Mr. No Grass here. I've forgotten every single one, not forgotten them, but I cannot even recall any one of them just now. I could understand the reticence if we were asking for names, but yeah. we're not. No. It's simply a principle. Not now, but after this TV show, all the tabloids come on and say, right, we'll have a few names now then, well, Jim. They've been doing that, <laughs> they've been doing that too, for years anyway. But don't you find that Ooh. because of this relationship with your mother, hey? because of this relationship with your mother, yeah. it has overpowered relationships that you might have had with other women. No, if I took a girl home while she was there, she'd sling them out if I went to the loo. <laughs> she'd do that, but not because she had anything going for, for me as a son, but she didn't want anybody uh, nicking her life of luxury off her, so she, she'd kick him out the door a bit lively. So she was possessive. As, as I'm sure a lot of mothers will do with some So she was like a that. possessive oh, mother. Her, her get him. She eh? was possessive? No, not really. Not really. But she, she was frightened no, of she losing was, you? No, she was a survivor. But she was frightened of losing you? Yeah, no, no, no. What she didn't want was for me to walk in and say, hey, you know that girl I brought in last week? Yeah, well, she's going to move in here and you're going to move out. Who didn't want any of that? Out. Get out. Little fixin'. Do you think that stuck with you ever Hussie. since? Get out, Jose. But has that coloured your attitude ever since, you think? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to sneak him in the back then. Or I used to give her a few quid to go away on holiday and then I could take him in then. Uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so this feign trembling at the beginning is more that ridicule style to diminish anything upcoming, even before he knows. The minute he realizes that it is a cleric, he changes. He's not so irreverent anymore because I think he realizes the audience didn't appreciate it at first. But if you don't think the audience is insulation, look at him as his mother issue comes up. Look at him reaching for the audience, trying to draw them in. And he's, again, doing this cigar tra trancing thing. But he also, when the mother issue comes up, this makes me really want to poke and prod and ask questions because he retreats against the back of his chair pretty seriously. And then he goes back to farce. I've forgotten. Then he goes to the logic of why he's doing it. He turtles. He, he, but his left hand is balled up when this whole thing around his mother and lack of relationships and all of that come up. When he talks about his mother saying that nobody else would get him, there's just awkward body language and a nervous smile that lets me know this is hitting too close to home for him compared to some of the other stuff. Maybe it's because, you know, he lost his mother and there's a whole lot of baggage associated with that. But then when he when he does say that one thing where he says no one else will ever get him, he's saying his mother's saying she's just like all mothers. No one else will ever get him. Well, I don't think that's true. And then he tries to pull the audience in. And when he tries to pull the audience in, he gets nothing. And then he makes a big smile and there's no eye involvement. I, I think. This one, more than any other thing we've seen, hit home somehow. We don't know why. We don't know what. We don't know all the details. But whether it's because his mother sabotaged something, he had a bad, a weird relationship, can't tell. But this one, I think, hits close to home. Mark, what do you think? Yeah, it's always difficult to, to work out fully what was happening between him and his mother, often referred to as the Duchess. 
Um, maybe the Duchess because of the authority that she had, maybe the Duchess because uh, the level that she wished to live and hang on to him uh, at that economic uh, level. Uh, there's probably a whole bunch of uh, psychologists you can go and listen to talking about what that relationship might be. Look, certainly it's very clear that when this canon comes on, canon of Westminster, so I'm guessing that's probably Westminster Catholic Cathedral, canon there. Um, uh, Jimmy was, uh, Savile was, was a um was a, a catholic uh had audiences with the pope uh, so again you know how can this person hide there that seems you know to people who don't where he doesn't hold that other real estate you'll go okay clearly uh grandiose narcissist uh clearly potentially psychopathic um you know uh, you know high uh does acts among at risk youth i mean there's there's elements there that won't mean there's going to be abuse uh in in every case of course but you know it's it's stacking up around potential, why would the British public uh, be duped? Well, this is somebody who raised more money than any other individual in the UK for children's hospitals. So who would go out and run marathon after marathon after marathon in order to raise money for uh, charity. This is the person who was given his own room at Broadmoor Hospital, where he probably should have been incarcerated as one of the biggest villains that Britain ever saw, was given keys to the back door of Broadmoor to be able to get himself in there and stay there over overnight. So surely the British public would go, well, if he's trusted in this kind of way by our authorities, by Edwina Curry, who was, uh, who was um, you know, in charge of Broadmoor at the time, if he's trusted in this way, then surely we should trust him. British public had no reason. To, to doubt that this was a eccentric person, yeah, but in a great long line of eccentric uh, entertainers. Well, I think it, at, at, at this point, um, we get this childlike jumping up and down on the chair again, this, this idea of innocence, uh, childlike, you know, somebody who would be around children who's like a bit of a, a child, an innocent, uh, a, a, a comic, a, a buffoon. Um, but then, uh, also, I think we get the closest here to him being penetrated in some way. Has this colored your attitude? says the interviewer, yeah, 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 now if A, and then he stops himself. Then he stops himself self, and he goes back in time and he goes, I used to sneak them in the back. So the interview here was about to get a moment of self, maybe not self-reflection, but a moment of confession as to what he does now. And that stopped. That was, uh, that was, uh, cut off. So closest we get to any break in his facade, I think, was that moment there. Uh, Chase, what do you got on this one? Yeah, y'all covered most of what I had. You're just seeing a desperation for social approval in the face of, uh, I won't say a terrible interviewer. I think the interviewer is doing a decent job at having some composure here. Definitely is not asking the questions that I would want him to ask in these instances scott i agree and i wondered about that but it's because it's this is your life you know is that show it's supposed to be how wonderful this guy is that's why they're doing the show if, I, if i'm correct about that this is that no it's, it's a response it's, to that oh okay it's called, this it, one's called is this your life so it's kind of a reversal oh. or not quite a parody but a hard talk version of this is your life where you get oh. to interview. yeah yeah, yeah. Can That's hard questions. Yeah, it's similar, but they're harder questions. Okay, all right. Well, I want to make the differentiation between a comic and a clown. This guy is not a—he's he's not a comic. He's not a comedian. He's just a clown. And so that's what we're seeing. There's there's no there's no depth to anything. I'm sure whatever he would present is to be funny. There'd be no depth there either. There's no thinking about it. It just kind of is the lowest common denominator as it has been up to this point. I think he's using the cigar at this. By now, he's used it as everything. He's used it as a deflector. He's used it as an illustrator. He's used it as an adapter. He's using it for everything. So it's a great little tool. I think that was the same thing with the banana as well. I think back on, he's using it for all kinds of stuff. Um, that still just continues with the, the shallow and glib answers. Uh, he can't control this conversation. I think that bothers him too. So we're seeing that bit of agitation uh, 
flare up there. So that's why he gets so animated and a little bit louder than he has been. Um, and I, I think that's a, this is a great example of a narcissist trying to take control of something, and he can't. And there's no reason for him to, since you're there. he's there to be asked questions, not an interrogation, but he's there to be asked questions, apparently. And that's what that's that's why it's it's just it's pretty bad. Um and I think that's what's driving him crazy. So the and the closer the interviewer still gets to the things that really happened or he could be nailed for, that's when he starts starts acting that way and flipping out and being weird and, and trying to be funny, he turns into the clown, the fool as you guys say. All right, that's all I got. We good? You know, yeah. just remember when we're talking about interviewing and interrogating this guy, Mark said it. He was a national treasure at this point. Mm. He's not Bob. He's somebody who has real estate in everybody's brain. Nobody has any idea he's done anything. So you probably have to be a little bit cautious where you go, to. I would think. One of those tape replays. Thank God. Well, let's see if we can get a bit further on this, because we spoke to the very Ooh. Reverend Colin Semper. Oh, He's Colin. the canon of Westminster and producer yeah. of your Radio 1 religious chat shows. Yeah. Called Speakeasy. He told us this. The relationship which was quintessential to him uh, was that with his mother, the Duchess. That was all important, and I sometimes feel that if he had had a long and lasting other relationship than that, rather than this nomadic existence, it might have been more fulfilling for him in his life. So according to the canon, is it, is it really because you had this special relationship with your mother that you found it difficult to create other relationships with other women? Unfortunately, no. Unfortunately. It would make life easy so. if I could say yes, but the Duchess had no part in this nefarious knife of mine uh, after dark, which was the pop world. But it would be true to say that the Duchess, mm. your mother, mm. is the only woman that you've really had a special close relationship with? No. Well, that's what you said earlier on. You said you hadn't had anybody, anybody else. I tell lies when it suits me. <laughs> I've had plenty of close relationships, but like I said, Mr. No Grass here, I've forgotten every single one, not forgotten them, but I cannot even recall any one of them just now. I could understand the reticence if we were asking for names, but yeah. we're not. No. It's simply a principle. Not now, but after this TV show, all the tabloids come on and say, right, we'll have a few names now then, well, Jim. They've been doing that, <laughs> they've been doing that for, for years anyway, but don't you find that Whoa. because of this relationship with your mother, Hey. Because of this relationship with your mother, yeah. it has overpowered relationships that you might have had with other women. No, if I took a girl home while she was there, she'd sling them out if I went to the loo. <laughs> she'd do that, but not because she had anything going for, for me as a son, but she didn't want anybody uh, nicking her life of luxury off her, so she'd, she'd kick him out the door a bit lively. So she was possessive. As, as I'm sure a lot of mothers will do with some So she was like a that. possessive oh, mother. Her, get him. She eh? was possessive? No, not really. Not really. But she, she was frightened no, of she losing was, you? No, she was a survivor. But she was frightened of losing you? Yeah, no, no, no. What she didn't want was for me to walk in and say, hey, you know that girl I brought in last week? Yeah, well, she's going to move in here and you're going to move out. Who didn't want any of that? Out. Get out. Little vixen. Do you think that stuck with you ever bosses. since? Get out, Jose. But has that coloured your attitude ever since, you think? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to sneak him in the back then. Or I used to give her a few quid to go away on holiday and then I could take him in then. If you like this video, get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.